Now, Adora Svitak reads three books a day. She's written 400 short stories and nearly 200 poems, and she likes French philosophy. Rather unusual for someone who's only eight. Adora and her mum, Choice, are with me now. Good morning to you. Oh, and no, I forgot to mention that you've also had a book published, which is called Flying Fingers, which is um, uh, inspiration and helpful tips for writing stories. Yeah, you. <laughs> so you started writing stories, as I understand it, when you were four? Um, yes, I wrote out longhand. Um, yeah, I started writing when I was four, but I started typing more when I was six, and those stories became more mature. Right, so that was hence the flying fingers, because they fly over the keyboards, I'm assuming. Yes. So, so, Mum, were you surprised when she just became so prolific at such a young age? Uh, initially, yes, I was surprised because I understand children, you know, between four and five, they don't just keep writing pages after pages. And especially when she was six, she got a computer, she would type hours at a time. So I, initially, I was pretty surprised. And these early stories, uh, were they good ones? Uh, quite good, you know, considering um, it's quite... You know, most of them pretty short stories, but uh, gradually uh, her story gets longer and longer and then the plot gets thicker and thicker. <laughs> and I know, Dora, that you're quite keen on strong um, girl heroines, aren't you, in, yes, your, in your stories? I, Why is that? Um, I want to portray girls as more of the... Um, I want to portray girls as showing other... Um, showing readers that girls can really be strong and girls can make a difference in the world and the girls are equal to men. And, and, and why did you feel that so strongly, though? Was that because whenever you'd read stories that, about um, young people, that, that the girls didn't seem to be very strong? Um, yeah, a lot of stories, um, like King Arthur, stuff like that. And the women were just, they just walked all around and didn't really and do anything pretty, of importance. Generally. Yeah. They just had yeah, to look attractive that, a lot of time. Andrew actually thinks that that's exactly that's how women old, should stay. Yeah, but that's the old days, <laughs> I can tell you. It's all changed around now, thanks to the work that you're putting in on those books. Um, so, Adora, you're trying to, you're, you're trying to persuade uh, children, aren't you, to do more reading? Um, yes, I More am. reading and writing. Yeah, I'm trying to persuade children and I'm going to like libraries and bookstores and schools to sort of talk to them and try to inspire them. And, and do you understand why they like computer games so much? Um, I think that once they start it might get addictive or something. Or, You're not into them. Or yeah, I'm not into them personally, but I think maybe if they don't have if they feel they don't have anything else to do, then sometimes they just get addicted to them. So why do you love reading so much? Well, I love reading because it gives me a chance to share my thoughts and... Um, That's when you're writing, I'm talking yeah. about when you're reading. Oh, sorry. Um, so when I'm reading, it gives me a chance to really learn about other people and um, give me a chance to understand their thoughts and give me a chance to learn about the world. And, and new um, words, I know, because I know you yeah. quite like you quite like a new word here and there, don't you? Um, and Mum, Adora's been taught, along with her sister, actually, who's also something of a child prodigy, I know they've been taught at home. That's correct. Why, why was that? Oh, well, their age, um, you know, don't allow, I mean, United States, you have to be a certain age to go to school, and by the time they were, they were way advanced, so there's really no point to send them to school, so we decided just teach them at home because we have always taught them at home, so we just continued. There will be people at home looking at this and going, Pushy parents. Do you feel you're pushy? Uh, I wouldn't use a pushy as a, you know, uh, adjective to describe myself because uh, we encourage and support them. That's why we do and that's where we are. Okay. And Adora, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do I need to ask? Um, well, I'm going to be a writer, oh, probably. I you I'm might going say to that. <laughs> but I might also want to be a teacher and a journalist. That would be fantastic. Well, Adora, I'm sure you'll achieve all those things. Um, thank you very much, Adora. Thank you very much, uh, Joyce. You can find out more about uh, Adora's story by logging onto the website gm.tv. Thanks very much. First female president of the United States, <laughs> Adora Svitak. What odds can I get, John? <laughs> thank you very much indeed for coming in this morning. That's it for the news. I'll be back with uh, Kate in just a moment, GMTV Today. Yep, I'll be talking to uh, Misha Paris and Lisa Butcher, the new faces of what not to wear. It's a tough act to follow, but they'll be having a go at that. Uh, we'll do the weather next with Claire and your chance to name a newborn giraffe. It's mm -hmm. got to begin with G.
Listen, this young lady sitting next to me, Adora, we've asked her to name a giraffe, and indeed, this morning we asked her to write a poem about our giraffe. You might ask why, as she's only eight years old, but she's got a good set of qualifications for doing Certainly. it. Because um, over the past 18 months, uh, she's written her first book and had it published. She's written 400 short stories and 200 poems, and she's only eight years old, and she's got her mum, Joyce, along with her as well. Goodness me! Goodness me, what an achievement. When did you first think you were quite good at all this? When did you first start like reading and books? Um, well, I first really started to like it when my dad started reading to me when I was still like two or three or so, and then I began reading chapter books and um, uh, myself when I was also three and a half or four or so. And so um, I really grew to like it quite a lot because I could learn about the world and learn other people's thoughts and stuff through reading. Very, very good. And then you thought, well, I'm going to have a go at putting these thoughts on, on paper, or in fact on computer, because you're living in the modern world, and start writing stuff yourself. Where do you get your ideas from for all your stories? Um, well, I look around the world around me, and um, I, I'm also inspired by people I meet, places I see, stuff like that. Um, also, sometimes I'm inspired by good books. Um, and sometimes I just randomly think up something. So those are all the things that contribute to my stories. What do you think? Because a lot of, a lot of um, youngsters, don't they, think that, that books are a bit boring. We often hear that people say that kids aren't interested in books anymore. But what would you say to, to your, do your friends all love reading as well, or is it just you? Um, well, some of my friends like it, but um, they, they don't... Um, they don't write as much sometimes, um, mm. but... Well, nobody writes as much as you, because you're a very fast typist for a start, aren't you? I think we can see a little example of it. 80 words a minute. Oh, yes, thanks, yeah. OK, just show, give us a little demonstration on the computer, and we might be able to put up a sample of what you're doing, and so we can see it. There she go. Now, you're going to start... Ah, this is all your ideas, isn't this? This is your poem. We can look at the detail. Yeah. Just do a bit of typing for us so we can see how yes. quickly you do it. Do you mind? Here, I'll go to a new You can put something like, here. Kate is great or something, just as an idea. <laughs> yeah, no. Who is this person I'm talking to? I've come all the way to England. You go for it, Adora. <laughs> ah. <laughs> no. Here you are. <laughs> yeah. And you can do 80 words a minute. How did you get so quick? Um, well, I watched my mom quite a bit, and um, also I did a bit of a typing CD, so I that was part of it. Li listen, we've got to talk to mum here. Joyce, you must be terribly proud. When did you spot you had such a little prodigy on your hands? Well, her interest in reading um, in the early on, and that, you know, really pleased us. And then s since she started writing, and I was even more uh, pleased and very proud of her because I know writing is much harder than reading. And, and I, is it great that she should be so focused on, on such serious projects? Why shouldn't she be out riding bikes and being a normal child? Well, she does that as well. She mm. has a lot of other, you know, interests, swimming and play with other friends and... Uh, uh, but her passion for reading and writing... It's taken over. Yes. Do you know what? We want to see a bit of that passion now. Can you read us your poem, Adora? Sure. We haven't got long, so I have to ask you to be quick. Can you read us your poem? Sure. There's a giraffe in the zoo. He's very new and must have a name that begins with a G. Gary, great heart, guy and grim. They all have to begin with a G, not T or C or P or E. Oh, oh that's pretty. We're going to put all the rest of your poem on our website because it's great. Nice to meet you. Lorraine is next. <laughs>